Okay. So today we will be talking about operations management. For operations management, we will be talking about the following slides. So this is to help us identify what is operations management. Of course, you know what the ICA model is all about. This is to also help us understand and identify what are the five ends of operations types of business models uh, to help us understand the critical processes and subsystems in the information process. So for this one, of course, we will uh, start with defining the operations management first. Now, uh, in operations management, it is about delivering products and services to customers in order for them to meet or surpass any expectations. This is created in order for us to um, design and get the work done and get things done with efficiency and at the same time, it's also suitable for everyone. Now, in operations management, there are three basic principles or three basic pillars that we need to understand. First thing is evaluation of suppliers. Second is materials and requisition. And then the next one is storage and inventory system. Now for the evaluation of suppliers, the process of choosing the best suppliers is done by any of the businesses. So what we can see right here is that uh, all of us, like Sayan Lahat and then we made a social, every business in order to minimize any form of defects, any form of damages, and to avoid any form of mishaps when it comes to our businesses, what we do is we try our best in order for us to find the right suppliers. So Dito is the first thing that we do is we try to canvas everything. So we don't just go to the first supplier and then decide that that particular supplier is the right one agad agad. We don't do that. So what we do is uh, once we start and try to, to look at the supplies given to us, we evaluate them based on kung ano man yung efficiency, uh, based on the lead time given, based on the price given, based on the quality that they could offer, yung lahat yung nagiging basuhan ng ating mga supplies. The next one is the uh, materials and requisition. Now, for the materials and requisition, this is when every business decides whether or not they should be getting the inventory um, in a specific period of time. So, so, when kailan ba dapat sila nag-replenish ng mga inventories nila. Um, this is where the time is very important. This is where we try to assess kung gaano katagal dapat, ano yung MOP mo, and then we try to understand um, kapag nasa ganitong level na dapat medyo madami na yung supply or dapat nag-order na tayo para dumating siya on the time that is needed. The next one, or the last one, and these pillars are the storage and inventory system. When we talk about the storage and inventory system, this actually describes how the business stores the finished goods and protects its inventory against any possible theft and losses. It also referred to as um, stock control. So, due to the stock control, anything that you have to do is applicable for you as a business owner. So you could either use the FIFO, the LIFO, and the JIT system, depending on what kind of business you are and what kind of supplies you offer. So when we talk about FIFO, okay, am I going to fast? So, okay. Now when we talk about first in and first out or the FIFO system, this method is most used by any food-related business. Kasi dito, kung ano yung unang pumasok na bang inventory sa inyo, kung ano yung unang manatanggap, yun yun dapat yung na rin lalabas sa inyo. So, what we try to do is we give them um, uh, time na nandun lang sila sa inventory ninyo and then later on, yun yung unang mong gagamitin. So, why is this done? Because usually, in this type of businesses, we have expiration dates. So, meron lang time na pwede yung mismo item. So, in that specific time, you cannot just, you know, force people na parang, ah, okay pa to, okay pa yung mismong item, so gamitin pa natin, no. Kasi, yun nga, again, at the same time, meron siyang nahabal na time, kung saan applicable lang siya, pwede mo siyang gamitin. 
after that, hindi na pwede. Okay? Next is the, the LIFO. Now, uh, when you say LIFO system, this is not in and first up. In the LIFO system, most businesses that use this kind of uh, inventory or storage system is um, the people that are um, have limited time frame wherein they need to catch on the trend that has additional items. So what are these businesses? Usually, these are the ones that are in retail. So kung nakikita naman natin, sa palat-palat sila, nang in-open nila ng mga um, items. Usually, the ones that are in display are the ones that are recently bought. These are the ones that is um, pinupush nila agad kasi nga, yun yung bago. So they don't keep a certain item for a long period of time given that that particular product will um, eventually lilipas yung kasikatan niya. So after that, kailangan habulan mo siya. Kakabulan mo yung time, available and pwede pa siya, applicable pa siya, and um, gusto pa siya nagtao. Okay? So we have the life system. So this one, this became a big problem for a lot of retailers because this system to have a lot of uh, inventory that are on hand that um, hindi sila makada din din kaagad. So, this became a big problem for one specific brand, which is Forever 21. So, for Forever 21, this became the rise and the fall for that particular business. I don't know if this is fit in the play, but I'll be linking down uh, in the description box kung ano man yung video na nandito. So, um, one of the biggest sounds for Forever 21 is that they were, they, there came a time that mag approve sila ng more than um, thousands of designs per day. And then, um, nakikita natin sa stories nila na kung ano yung mga bago, ano yung mga on-trend, yun talaga yung binibenta nila. But the quality suffered. Um, also, there have been a lot of mass production that are involved. Kaya, hindi na rin ganun sa ganda yung mga producer na lumalabas sa kanila. At the same time, um, it pushed forever 21 to the point that um, whatever they sell, hindi na rin sa magiging okay kasi nga parang um, in style lang siya, pero it's not necessarily good. So, that became a problem for them. So, another thing is the just-in-time method. So when we say the just-in-time method, the just-in-time method, also known as the perfect ready, actually considered as the perfect inventory system. Why? You only create products if there is demand. You only produce the ones that are um, available when it's it. Once there's orders or it, so hindi ka gumagawa ng mga orders or hindi ka nagpaproduce ng mga products kung wala namang demand for it. You can also produce ng mga items and sit in mo wala namang bibili. So, what we try to do is that you only uh, get products, you only uh, produce products when it's necessary. So, one of the few companies that was able to perfect this method was um, Toyota, the car company, and Zara. So, Zara, naka si Zara yung mga example natin dito. Say, although they are retailers in the fashion industry and they have a trend to follow, season to follow, hindi kasi, halos lahat kasi sa kanila in-house. So unlike Forever 21, na nag outsource sila ng mga workers nila for uh, their mananahe, mga uh, ganun. For Zara, they have everything in-house. So everything is lined up. And at the same time, in that particular system, it became better for them kasi diba? um, hindi sila nagsustock na marami. Yun. Kung mapapansin natin sa mga store nila, unlike na Forever 21 na talaga check yung mga rack from Zara kasi konti lang ng mga nasarap nila. And dun sa mga rack na meron sila, usually there are 3 to 4 5 pieces lang of the same item. At kapag naubos na yun, eh, hindi naman naman katak sa uh, kabilis yung turnover for that product, hindi na nila pinuproduce, nag-move on sila to another design. So, that is one of the reasons that made it applicable for Zara. 
So they don't go for the volume. They go for quality, even though they are in the fast fashion. So when we look at operations functions, so when we look at the operations functions, one of the three things, or when the first one is the business, palagi na sa business is the operation side or the operation system. So what they try to do is that um, the operation team gives something and it gets something in return. So there's that exchange that is happening within the business or in the industry itself. So when we talk about marketing, so for marketing, marketing and operations also goes hand in hand because we try to get all the certain forecasts ilang ba dapat ito produce natin sa a certain period of time. So with the forecast from the marketing team, they were able to create what is needed. They also get customer feedback, ano ba yung mga tinitingnan. And at the same time, if there are promotions that is done by the marketing team, usually kailangan nakakasabot sa operation for that one. They should be able to create certain products for we should be able to um, produce the product in time when it's needed. So, um, same goes with finance. So, ano ba yung ginagawa ng finance? So, finance kasi ang nagbabudget. Sila yung nagpapos ng analysis. Sila yung um, nagpumitingin if there's enough capital or there's enough money that will uh, na nag-circulate within the business. And with that one, they were able to produce the right inventory. So allocation, all of the allocations that are involved are provided by the finance team. So all the capital requests, all the requests, and techno- uh, technological functions that is provided by the finance and accounting department. Another thing is supply. Okay. So Clara naman sa atin that when you say operations, it talks about inventory and supply. It talks about how different products circulate um, within the industry or within the business itself, and kung paano mo siya i-allocate sa bawat uh, isang department na kung nag-agalawa mo or yung lahat ng mga product na ginagawa mo. In order for you to create orders, you need to have the right supply. And you need to figure out what's the MOP, what's the lead time of everything. Uh, katulad nga doon sa una natin na sabi, yung pinakatatong pillar, um, mahalaga na alam mo kung ano yung quality na hinahanap mo. And at the same time, alam mo rin kung ano or gano karami yung dapat sinag-treat mo. Um, the last one is the human resources. So this includes the uh, hiring, the training, legal requirements which is provided by the HR and at the same time, how will it affect all of the skills that are needed within your business? How it will affect um the culture of the actual business, how it could uh, affect the performance of everyone that are involved in the business itself. So, lahat ng yun, kasama sa operations function natin. Okay? Now, we move on with the types of business models. When we talk about business models, it talks about how a business or a company plans um, to generate revenues and to create profit. So, um, ito yung ginagawang plano. Okay, ito yung model ng mga businesses. Kung saan sila kumukuha ng mga revenues nila, ano yung mga pinagkakagasit sa nila, and paano yung ma-apektahan yung negosyo with all of those plans. Okay. So, there are different types of business models, but I would only mention a few. First one, or one of the most common, would be direct sales. When we say direct sales business model, when we say direct sales business model, this talks about um, under a direct sales business model, sales of products or services generate revenue through a network of sales people. So there are different sales people that are involved in this one who sell directly to every customer. Now, in a direct sales business model, there is no fixed retail location. There is no location that is involved, only a HQ if it's necessary. So, dun sa HQ, pwedeng dun nang magaling lahat ng supplies. So, parang yun yung warehouse nila. Dun ka nagre-report sa mga superiors mo if uh, that part of the business model. But, it doesn't necessarily have um, a retail store kung saan pwede bumili yung mga tao. So, 
for the direct sales business model, yun yung ginagawa nila. Now, the difference of that one in a franchising is that when you go for franchising, this is an arrangement between a franchiser and a franchisee. So, um, the one who is giving up that particular trademark or the right for another person to use its name, its um, product, in order for them to generate sales, in order for them to create um, systems, okay? Franchise and development. So, pinapahiram mo yung pangalan mo, yung negosyo mo sa ibang tao, you make profit out of it, and then sila na ngayon yung mag-distribute to certain customers na hindi mo na sa tapos. Now, a lot of us think that um, franchising is actually a good business model, which is true. Um, I really do like the idea of franchising, especially for um, early entrepreneurs or people who are starting. Okay, hindi mo na siya uulitin or hindi mo na siya, you don't start it from scratch. So you already have a basis of what you want and what you want it to be because of the design. The design is, is already there. And at the same time, um, ginagawa mo na lang is iniintay mo or parang pinupondahan mo na lang sila para makapag-expand sila. So, what are the pros and cons for this one? I actually have a video right here of Subway. Why did I give this an example? Kasi si Subway, well, si Subway kasi, they're the biggest franchise in the world. Okay? They're the biggest franchise in the world. They were able to... Um, have different chains in different parts of the country, uh, in the U.S., both in the U.S. and in the Philippines, meron na rin sila. So, um, what happened to them is um, they have a rise and the fall because of the franchising model. So, this is what it is. You can view the video. Again, it's linked down below in the description box if you're interested in that one. Okay? Now, what are the pros and cons for this one? Oh my god. Okay, so for the pros and cons for this one, one of the biggest pros for a franchising is that there is, um, it's a brand already. It's already a recognized brand, which is why you are attracted to it, which is why you want it in the first place. It's already tried and tested, it's easier, it has great location, training support, and etc. Um, meron din tayong perception that it has a faster ROI just because um, yun nga, parang branded na siya. So, unlike yung to start yung siya from scratch na ikaw magmamarket yung yung everything. So, franchise itself two versions for you. Kasi nga, they wanted to attract you na kaya mo kumita ng pera using their brand. Ang meron lang dito ng cons is that it's very expensive. A lot of franchise that we know right now are very expensive. Perk Shawarma is 1.7 million already. Yun yung pinakamaliit nila, yung pinakamura nilang stand. Um, another example would be Potato Corner. Potato Corner is already at 1 million minimum na stand nila. Um, another is uh, Master Shawmai. Si Master Shawmai nga, 350 or 400 na sila uh, for their franchising fee, fee pa lang yun. So, wala pa yung part and everything. With all of that included, it will cost you a lot of money. So, it's very expensive. At the same time, you will also be providing um, a royalty fee. For other franchisees, uh, wala nang royalty fee. But for most of the franchises that I know, um, meron silang royalty fee na hindi. So, ano yung royalty fee? The royalty fee is like a commission or yung cut nila from the profit na in-earn mo. So, kung meron kang 10,000 na kinikita kada buwan, meron silang cut doon. So, depende sa contract, pwede 5%, 3%, 10% of the profit kukunin nila. So, it actually depends on the kind of deal that these franchises would be given to each franchise. Okay? So, it also has limited flexibility because well, you're tied up with contracts. You're tied with what is given to inyo. So you can't just change anything from the menu. You can't just change anything in general. Because again, nakasalalay dun sa nag-franchise kung ano yung ibigay sa mo. Okay? 
So again, it's also part of uh, a big business risk for a lot of people to say, again, it costs you a lot of money to do this. Okay? Another type is um, advertising-based. Advertising-based business model, of course, focuses more on ads. It's focused on um, targets and targeting people. Like, for example, magazines. Okay. I don't know if you still buy magazines, but in a magazine, if you rip off the page, the pages of um, every page in the magazine which has a lot, which has ads, Siguro ang matikira lang dun sa magazine yung mga tatlong page lang. Bakit? Kasi um, in a magazine, cover pa lang may ad na. Okay? Naka, nakasulat na dun sa magazine. Let's say, si Gigi Hadid yung nag-cover na magazine. Tapos nasa Vogue. Lahat ng makeup na sinamit niya nakalista. Kung sino yung photographer niya nakalista. Kung consensual signature na nakalista. Kung ano yung damit na sinamit niya nakalista. And those are ads. That type of business model uh, focuses on advertising base. So, nagre-realize sila kung gano'n karami yung mga ads na maglalagay sa kanila. Billboards, um, websites, advertising base business model sila. Kasi yung mga banners na meron, lahat yun binabayaran natin. Okay? In order for us to be visible in these particular platforms. You understand? Okay. Pero ayun mo ang mga billboards, sobrang mahal nila. Mahal sila lahat kasi uh, I think in EDSA, uh, half a million per month. So, di ba yung half a million per month. And um, dun sa sa pinakasangat na location yun, pinaka, hindi masyado na dadaanan. Pero it's still EDSA. Well, medyo maliit yung magiging billboard. But again, it's still EDSA. Okay? Ay. Okay. Okay, so nandito na tayo sa brick and mortar naman. When you say brick and mortar, this is more on uh, traditional. It is very traditional na business yung nakikita natin. So they have, um, they have a store, um, sometimes face-to-face na they interact with a lot of customers. For example, um, a cafe business, that is um, a brick and mortar of it. Dahil dito, as in, you get to interact with or you get to interact with your customers in order to keep it with them. So that is a brick and mortar. Ito namin yung sinasabi ko rin. You start everything from scratch. Like, wala kang brand. Ikaw yung nagbibigyan ng brand mo. Ikaw yung naglalapat ng marketing mo, ng operations mo, and everything. So it all depends on the kind of hardware that you put into it. Okay? So that's a brick and mortar. Okay? Next is app base. So when we say app base, it utilizes software applications. So ito na yung mga nakikita natin sa mga phones natin, sa mga laptops natin, kung saan um, we use different apps in order for us to be more productive, personalization, game. So yan yung mga business model na ginagamit nila. So nagre-reply sila sa uh, mga apps itself. Doon sila kumukuha ng revenue, doon din sila gumagasok ng maintenance. Um, of the actual application bug, uh, yun yung mga tinatay nilang tanggalin sa kanila sa software nila, which is um, again, a lot of maintenance. Okay? Same goes with web-based. Um, the only difference is that um, a web-based, of course, a uh, worldwide web ka, uh, it's a search ko pa siya in order for you to see it, uh, the website itself. So, all the transactions, all the all transactions happens on the actual website. Okay? So, kapag app naman, you need to install the app first and then do the transaction there. Okay? Now, one question I have for you is, um, is Facebook, the social media that we know of, um, is it on app-based or a web-based model? What do you think? Three, two, one. Sabo. Okay. So, it's actually both. Um, the answer is both because this business, well, any type of business can have multiple um, business models. Um, it, it only depends on how you were able to utilize each business model. So, pwedeng mag-brick and mortar pa, but at the same time, you wanted to go into a franchise and stuff. So, fine. You're a brick and mortar and at the same time, you have direct business models along the side. That's all also fine kasi yun nga. It depends 
kung paano mo gagamitin ng mga models nito. Um, when we talk about business model, kasi, uh, again, it's how you generate revenue. Paano ka kumukusa ng pera and paano ka nagkakaroon ng tax. Okay? So, now, um, what I want to show you is uh, how this uh, how the IPO model is used by different businesses and how this framework is utilized in order for us to analyze all of our enterprises. So, kapag nag-trama kayo, medyo ito yung pag-aaralan mo in the future. So, we have right here, uh, this actually is found in your book already, um, have the IPO framework, which is input, process, and output framework. So, as part of our input, it is composed of the five M's of operation. This is actually six M's in other books, but in your book, it's only five M's. So I'll be discussing on that one. So we have the men, machinery, materials, methods, and money. Okay? Now, first one, materials. When we talk about materials, these are the semi-processed goods that, we, that would be subjected to further transformation. So it can be not transform that in order for us to create a new form of output. The next one is the manpower. The manpower are the human resources that you need uh, in order for you to create processes or the business itself. It also uses um, intellectual and creative abilities and other qualities of individuals that can contribute to the production itself. Now, the next one, we have machinery. For machinery, we have man-made physical capitalities in the production process. We also have, of course, the tools, uh, in order for you to create the process, all of the necessary equipment, the physical plan, that is included in all of your machinery. Okay, so yung ginamit ng mga pambig, ginamit ng uh, pans, lahat yun machinery. Okay? Um, the difference of uh, materials in machinery is that machineries are fixed assets and the materials are your variable assets. So, Ibig sabihin, ang machinery mo, hindi na uubos yan. Once you buy a, a pan, for example, every time that there is output, hindi naman na uubos yung pan. But uh, for materials, every time that there is an increase of production, mag increase ka rin dapat ng mga materials that are necessary. Next one is method. Now, when we talk about the methods, these are the process. Process is combining all of the raw materials in order for you to create the output itself. So, kung ano man yung ginawa mo, okay, yung apply mo ng method, at na technology, um, yung, yung test na yun, that is part of the method that is being utilized. Okay? Um, technology or techniques is the production, labor intensive, or manual labor intensive. Okay. Last one is the money. Now, for the money, these are your financial resources. Um, ito yung kakailangan naman, let's say, capitalization, how much capital are we talking about? That would be part of your input. <laughs> now, in your process or in the IPO framework, um, as part of your input, okay, uh, we have what we call intermediate and factor input. When we talk about the intermediate out, uh, input, uh, these are semi-processed materials that need further transformation. Na kailangan mo pa siyang fitting to. Kailangan mo pa siyang um, lapatan ng mga proseso in order for it to produce the finished product. Now, for factor input, these are your input uh, process. The in these are the ones that you apply in this input, in this intermediate input para ma-process mo sila. Sexta. So, ulit. Kapag sinabi natin intermediate input, sila yung kailangan mo iplasa, sila yung kailangan mo i-tinker. Now, kapag sinabi natin factor input, sila yung naman yung ginagamit mo para ma-process itong mga factor input na to in order for you to create the finished product. Okay. See? Okay. So, for process, for the process, again, in the IPO framework, you have the process. Now, for process, you have physical transformation, Locational, international, exchange, and extractive transformation. For physical transformation, this is when the process of raw materials convert them into the same altered product. So, 
looking at the product itself, like yung value talaga, itsura niya, digitally. Okay? Locational transformation is when you put it from one place to another place. So, ito naman yung rate na yung pinag-iisapan. So, nag-iiba-iba yung location niya every time that there's processes involved. Every time na maybe na bago ka dun sa mismong product and sa input mo na yun, nagbabago rin yung location kung saan mo sa kailangan dalhin. Next is informational. Informational transformation is when um, knowledge and specialization or specialized skills are provided to the customers. For example, um, when a lawyer provides legal advice, that is a method of informational transformation. So, yung consumer, yung mga magiging advice dun sa lawyer, nalalaman niya ngayon kung ano mga steps na kailangan niyang gawin because of the lawyer. Okay, kasi nag-digital siya ng information ng mga things or information na kakailangan niya. Next is exchange transformation. Exchange transformation is when a commodity is transmitted from supplier to its buyer. So again, ito na yun yung from the seller itself to maan sa courier, i-deliver na kay customer exchange na yun. So may palita na nagagalap. Okay? Extractive is when natural resources is taken out from its habitat. So kinukuha mo na yung kung ano man yung kakailanganin mo dun sa environment na nalalagyan. Okay? Now, um, the last part of the IPO process or the IPO framework is the output itself. In the output, this is the result of the production process. So it may be in an output of the physical transformation, uh, locational, informational, exchange, or extractive transformation. So it will depend on the kind of transformation na nangyari dun sa mismong product or dun sa mismong input kung ano yung magiging output niya. Okay? Now, we're already done with the IPO framework or the input process and output framework. We now move on to the value chain. Okay. Bakit ba pinatawag ni value chain ng value chain? Value chain is called a value chain because every time that it, the input or any form of product or service is being processed, tumataas ng value nila. Okay? That's why it's called a value chain. This approach traces the value of a commodity in terms of how factor inputs are adding value to the raw materials. Again, it is the value added each time that there is process involved. So, tumataas yung halaga niya every time na tinitin ko yung isa. Let's say, a cotton to a t-shirt, hindi mo sila pwedeng i-compare sa isa isa. So, yung raw material na cotton, mas mura siya compared mo dun sa printed na t-shirt. Okay? Kasi meron na silang mga pinagdaanan. May mga cost na involved and may value na na-involved. Okay? Okay. Now, the next few slides is uh, how we will be able to assess the performance of a business enterprise. Okay? In a business enterprise, we can um, assess it through performance effectiveness. So when we talk about performance effectiveness, well, effectiveness indicates how the output of the firm was able to achieve the objective set, uh, set by the business enterprise itself. So when you talk about effectiveness, it talks about quality, dependability, and flexibility. Okay. Now, um, going to quality, the product ha, uh, was able to fulfill the minimum requirements set by the market and, of course, the, the governing bodies that are involved with this one, so may certain standard na fulfill mo siya, that is effective. Okay? Um, speed. Speed is also part of it. Now, when we talk about speed from quality, gaano nakabilis mo no, nagagawa yung process na yan, how effective are you in that specific area? Dependability is the consistency na no, nagagawa mo. Kung gaano ka reliable gaano ka consistent yung nagagawa mo no, in terms of production. And the last one is the flexibility. Flexibility is uh, how um, a business was able to adapt on the, uh, the changing environment of the company. Another uh, form of assessing performance in this life is uh, looking at performance efficiency. When you talk about efficiency, again, um, pag nag-assess ka kasi ng performance, 
um, you talk about efficiency and effectivity, the right? So when you talk about efficiency, it denotes how the output of the firm is realized using different resources. So if the firm is inefficient, it can threaten its uh, profitability and the survival of the market as well. So this is how you are able to utilize each input that is being given to inyo, paano mas magamit ng mas maayos, makaliit niyo ko, lahat yan, talks about efficiency. Okay? So, um, these are just some of the measures of partial productivity that, again, this can be found in your book if you want um, broader explanations about this one. When you try to measure partial uh, productivity, we talk about average productivity of labor. We also talk about average productivity of capital, uh, marginal productivity of labor, and marginal productivity of capital. So when you talk about this one, this is the value of total production per input of the labor uh, that is being uh, used in the business. So that average productivity of labor. And this one is uh, average productivity of capital. This talks about how uh, what or what is the value of total production per unit of capital input that you use? And we talk about marginal productivity of labor, which is the additional output per additional input unit of labor input. And the marginal productivity of capital is the additional output per additional in unit of capital input. Okay. Now, there are tons of ways. So there are kind of ways in order for you to improve um, productivity within the firm. But these are just some of the features that you can look into. First one is increasing output per unit of input. In order for you to effectively and efficiently uh, see your firm as productive, uh, we need to have um, an increase of output. Bumababa yung input mo, pero ito mataas yung output mo. Ibig sabihin, mas efficient and mas effective na nagagamit lahat ng bumapasok sa business. Napapadami mo kahit na same amount lang ay hindi, na, hindi lumalaki yung number of uh, inputs na bumapasok sa iyo. Or um, napapababa mo yung input mo o yung mga five cents ay sinabi ko sa inyo. Pero yung output mo marami pa rin. So, the second one is to reduce the cost of production. So, depending on how you utilize all of the inputs that are needed in your business, you will be able to reduce the cost of production as well. And of course, motivation. Motivate each uh, and everyone that are involved in the business as well. <coughs> okay. When you talk about um, operations managers, so they have a lot of uh, things that are part of their job, okay? But these are just some of, or these are the most important factors, or these are the most important things that they should be able to address and do when it comes to um, being productive or looking at the business future. First one is, of course, selecting, source and storing of materials and supplies. Yun talaga yung sa job operations manager. We need to uh, be able to store the right equipment, so the right input that is needed when you look at uh, the output that are being produced in the market. The second one is recruiting. Recruiting um, the right manpower uh, dun sa mga job na kakailangan nila. At the same time, they should be able to run and maintain everything that, um, uh, every process in the business. Continuous improvement of operations and upgrading of facility, quality assurance, and of course, productivity cost and profit management. Those are just some of the things that, or key things na kakailangan na isang operations manager. Okay? So, basically, that's it for operations. That, that is how we would be coming up everything for operations management. But if you have questions, inquiries, comments, and feedback, please do approach regarding that one. Okay? Or approach your teachers regarding it. Um, kailangan nyo pa na explanation regarding this. But this serves as a uh, um, supplementary para if ever we miss out um, anything during our 
Thank you, Nick. Special. At least you have this file para balik-balikan yung mga sasabihin at sumamin natin. Okay? So, see you again next time. Bye!